Hey guys, this is John and welcome to another Climbing the Rating Ladder video. I'm paired up here with Carlos, rated 1349. E4, E5 is the opening. Let's play Knight F3. Happy New Year, everyone. Hope your 2022 is starting off well. The Philidor defense. Okay, let's play D4. Yeah, I'm glad I got a game here. I was trying for uh, a game a little bit ago. Had a really short game. It was only 15, 15 moves, and my opponent got massive time pressure, deciding not to post that one. But uh, looks like we have an interesting game shaping up here. So C5, this move weakens the D6 and the D5 squares. So even though it attacks the knight, it seriously does weaken D5 and D6. And I believe the best move is bishop B5 check here, inserting this capture. I wouldn't mind a trade of the light square bishops because that should make it easier for me to conquer the d5 square in particular later. So we're going to throw that move in with the check. Looks, my, looks like my opponent might be having some connection issues. I hope <laughs> they get back here. This is a 10-minute game, so they've got a little bit of time. Nice to be back recording some climbing the rating ladder content. All right, my opponent reconnected. Good on them. Okay, so we got to take. And then we'll figure out where to move the knight. This will kind of depend where black decides to play next, what, what piece they decide to recapture with. Okay, so because knight takes d7 was played, I'm kind of tempted to go here to attack d6 because the queen is no longer defending the pawn. Knight b5, also an option because queen a5 check could be met by the other knight developing to defend the knight. Honestly, I think virtually any safe knight move is fine. But I'm definitely leaning towards knight f5. And I think I'm going to go ahead and play that. I'm curious how black's going to defend this. Okay, knight b6. So that gets the queen involved in the defense. Now, this is a target that I'm already going after. I can make a developing move here that also attacks that with a gain of time. And if you see that, kudos to you. I'm going to play the move bishop f4. So bringing that piece into the game. And this is a typical operation when black has moved that C pawn early and created that backward D pawn. That is a pawn that has no pawn on either side of it to defend it. It's backward and it's subject to attack. So what to do here as black? Now, if D5, I spot a possible tactical idea. Some of you may have seen it already. Whether or not I gave you that hint. <laughs> so the real astute of you probably anticipated that. But I could see black playing that because it's difficult to defend d6. Otherwise, there is the move knight c8. Retreating the knight, that might be the best move, but it doesn't look too hot. Knight c3 or castling are fine. I could try to, if I want, arrange castling queenside. Knight c3, queen d2, castle long, so that I get the rook involved in the attack on d6. So those are all ideas going through my head right now. Black could maybe counterattack. Knight f6 was an option. Okay, so black decides to defend d6 by playing knight c4. However, that knight is shaky there, right? It's undefended. If my c pawn was gone, I could play queen a4 check. But there is no immediate attack that I see that's going to punish them. Queen d3 comes to mind here. To attack the knight, I'm trying to bait knight takes b2 so I can play queen b5 check. Feels a little ticky tack though. I don't know. Queen d5 might be the better operation because that hits b7 and the knight. Queen d3, I wonder if black can go queen a5. Might be a decent defense. So of the ways to attack the knight with the queen, I'm kind of leaning towards queen d5. There is b3 as well if I want to hit the knight, but maybe black's going to go knight e5. So all that considered, looking at this, yeah, knight takes here. Queen a, queen a5, I'm not so worried about, but knight takes on b2. I can take b7. Let's say rook b8. I could give check on c6. We might have a trade of queens in that line. Other options here. Could just castle. Could just short castle and see how black responds. But you know what? Let's go with the queen d5 move. I think this is interesting, and we'll see how black plays this in reply. Hitting the undefended knight. I'm also attacking b7. If b5 to support the knight, I think that check on c6 is going to be especially disruptive because queen d7 would be the only move. Black doesn't have king e7 because I cover. 
And on queen d7, I can pick up the rook on a8 with check. So important moment for black here. I think knight takes b2 might be the best move. Okay, but black plays g6 instead. Now, this is instructive. You see a lot of players at, I'd say, the below 1600 rating level rely on these counterattack moves where I attack you, but instead of moving your attack piece, you try to attack me in some unrelated part of the board or with an unrelated piece or pawn. Okay, and that's what that g6 move kind of strikes me as. Spend your time on these moments. I've talked about this before, but these in-between moves, they can be punished oftentimes. Not every time, but they can often be punished. So what immediately comes to mind is queen takes c4, because if g takes f5, I can just take back, and I've won a pawn there. I'm looking for other knight moves that I might have. I'm not saying anything great, so I'm probably going to go with queen takes c4. Yeah, it looks like a safe way to bank a pawn. Black has very little in the way of development after this, too. Could throw this check in, but I might keep that in reserve. Yeah, let's go ahead and take this pawn. So black didn't lose anything truly catastrophic, but that probably will prove to be an important pawn. Black's king is starting to look pretty open to, to me, and they're a long ways from being able to castle. Okay, d5. So this hits my queen. If I give the check, queen d7 is probably going to be the answer. What else could I play here? There's a check on e2. Queen e7 might be the move. I could try to play something like this to attack the rook over here. You know, this, in theory, should be fine for me. I am up a pawn, but I do feel like keeping the queens on board. It's a little hard to describe, but somehow after this, I think the black king might be pretty comfortable on c6. So I may keep the queens on board here. Yeah, you know, let's play, let's play queen b3. Attack b7. If a check comes in here, queen e7, I may actually go king d1, which perhaps will feel a little bit reckless, but I can go rook e1 after that. I have some attacking potential. There's also queen e3 if I want to change my mind and trade queens there. Maybe black could go for this, though. Queen e7, and if I go king d1... They could castle queenside. Their king looks pretty open. I still like the look of my position there. But that would be an intriguing change of events here. But for now, let's see what black does. Okay, they do go queen e7. So decision time for me. Do I step this way, this way, or play queen e3? I'm not going to play bishop e3 because that runs into d4 with the pin. So king D1 is the move that appeals to me most here. And I think I'm going to play that. Let's do it. We're threatening rook E1. I know black can castle this way, but after knight C3, I'm going to try to prove that black's king is open. And maybe knight B5, the weakness of A7. Okay, another pawn move from black. Now, this is getting dangerous for them because I can look at check here. I can look at queen C3, hitting the rook and looking for a moment to play rook E1. Both those moves look mighty tempting, let me tell you. So here, here, we're probably looking at a swap of queens at that point. I can throw in a check. Bishop e5, there's always f6. But this queen c3 move looks insidious. Unless black goes ahead and plays d4, but I can take this pawn. Yeah, I just don't see how after queen c3, how black's going to fully solve their issues here. So let's do it. Basically arguing that I have a double attack. All right, so this game has been fairly sharp so far. A lot of stuff to think about. And I know I have a tendency to over-explain when I'm doing these videos, but <laughs> I'm keeping an eye on my clock. There is no increment in this game. It's just straight up 10 minutes per side. I feel though we've reached a critical moment. Now, if queen f6, this is a move black could try to step out of the pin. Queen f6, I was going to play bishop e5. Okay, here I think I can just take this bishop. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and capture that. It was undefended. And black's issues remain here. Rook e1, the attack on the rook. 
winning position now for me. But again, I didn't think Black Cat really had a solution there. Maybe d4 was the best move. d4 and just allow queen take c4 and somehow try to avoid the rookie one business, but it was looking too tough there. By the way, the rating skew for this game is, is definitely not in my favor. <laughs> you, guys, you guys might get a kick out of this, but check this out. If I move this up. Win zero, draw minus 119, loss minus 239. So that's a lot of pressure here for me with my four minutes on the clock. <laughs> Let's try to get the job done. Okay, rookie one is going to be the answer. Black's threatening my queen, but we can go for the pin. And we're going to win that queen. We'll pre-move this. This is a safe pre-move. And this rook is still trapped here. Yep. They castle. Oh, okay. I almost took this. However, I see a better move. I have queen c7 checkmate. So we'll play that. Okay. Thank you to my opponent for the game. Carlos from, looks like, Argentina. Yeah. Thank you for the game. I will post this uh, in a message to them. I like to send my opponents that I play in the Climbing the Rating Ladder series a message just in case they want to check this out. Again, this is an educational series. This is not at all meant to, you know, beat up on the lower-rated opponents. No. Uh, I'm a chess teacher. I teach chess pretty much every day. And I find it tremendously instructive to see how players play at the different rating levels. And I know you guys do too, because this series is super popular. A lot of other streamers have done variations of this type of series. And uh, a lot of times the opponents in these series say that they learned a lot too from watching the video back. So I uh, just wanted to say that. And thanks again, Carlos. So I did spend a lot of time early on here, but I felt like the dynamics of this position warranted it. Okay, and let's go to analysis mode so we can move the pieces around. All right, so Black played this Philidor defense. And I do think d4 is just the most straightforward way to tackle this opening. Immediately advance in the center and ask Black what they're going to do about the double attack on e5. White is threatening to win a pawn. Bishop c4 is also fine. Even knight c3, although you might want to preserve some flexibility just in case you want to put your pawn on c3. So I like d4 right away. The famous uh, Morphe versus the Duke in the Count game, which you can find on my channel, by the way, went bishop g4. And then Morphe played takes. And went bishop takes f3, queen takes f3. D takes e5, bishop c4, and Morphe ended up winning a brilliancy and I think 17 moves. So that's a historical game you should know. Ideally, you could memorize it. But my opponent plays the better move here. E takes d4. There's also knight d7, by the way, is another move. But after this knight comes to d4, this, this error that my opponent made, it's super common. So playing c5. And they get this short-term uh, dopamine hit of attacking the knight. But again... The, the square weaknesses, which can be a difficult concept to appreciate for, for many of you right now in your chess development, but the square we weaknesses, the backward pawn on d6 that no longer has any protection from an adjacent diagonal pawn, and this d5 square, which also cannot be covered by the c pawn, those can prove pretty telling in a lot of the, ga the games that, that come out of this. So that's why if we consult the database here, we'll just click on the Explorer, this is the master's database, high quality games. You do not see C5 in certainly the top five moves. There's only been four games played in this database. It's not a good move. Black's usually playing knight f6, just developing and attacking, even g6, knight c6, bishop e7. Um, but yeah, knight f6 would be the most straightforward. A, a lot of times black does end up playing bishop e7 and just castle short here, kind of plays the position minimalistically, if you will. But... If you are prone to playing that C5 move and making those weaknesses, cut that habit out immediately. And hopefully this, this game is instructive as to why that can be a mistake. So I throw in the bishop b5 check. Again, I don't, I don't mind a trade of the light square bishops. I like the idea of that trade because I can often plunk a piece on d5, especially a knight in the middle game, and black has one less piece, a bishop coming to say e6, that can trade for it on d5. Okay, so let's just say hypothetically black took with the queen instead here. I can play my knight, let's say back to f3. Probably wouldn't bring it to f5 because d6 isn't technically under attack. So maybe just some prototypical position we could get into out of this. These are not necessarily the best moves, but just to illustrate what I mean in like a middle game, um, let's say something like this happens. 
Maybe I even make a preparatory move so I don't lose a pawn eventually. Um, let's play one more preparatory move. Okay, something like this where uh, we have pieces in the game and I can plop this knight on d5. And the fact that black has this structure means that knight is unassailable from a black pawn coming to c6 or e6. Annoying for black that that's the case. And I might be hitting the bishop. They could maybe try to evict this knight. Like maybe they do at some point trade for it by moving their knight back. But the point is black lacks one piece that covers that square. There's one less piece that covers that. So that, that's just a possible rough transformation that could occur based on that bishop trade. So that's why I like to flick that bishop trade in. So we did get the trade. Black took with the knight, so developing. But then I like this, this knight f5 move. Maybe I can just turn the engine on here and see what it prefers. Yeah, it does like knight f5. Already we're looking at a plus one and a half position or so. Forces black to defend this pawn. And black plays their knight to b6 to do that so the queen can help defend. And it's so nice when you can develop with tempo, when you can develop with a gain of time. And that's what I'm doing here with this bishop f4 move. Bring a piece into the game. Now I have three attackers on d6, and black only has two defenders. Just going to see if the engine likes that as well. Yep, that's up there, bishop f4. And tough, tough call here for black, because I think the most secure way to defend the pawn is probably knight c8, but it's, it's a very passive move to play. I probably would just play knight c3 here. Maybe, just maybe, black can start kicking my pieces back, but you see that d5 square? It's going to be a great outpost for my knight, maybe even in, in the short term here. So I'm kind of curious what the computer thinks black should do here. Queen f6, that move did cross my mind. That's flashing up there. That attacks the b-pawn, so it could maybe be a counterattacking move. The little trick I mentioned in-game, and kudos if you saw this, was d5. Um, oh, I think I, I think I had a brain fart here. <laughs> you know what? I thought for some reason my knight was on b5, which wouldn't make any sense whatsoever because I would have knight c7. I was considering some operation like this where I could magically land a knight here and fork, but I must need more coffee or something, and it is getting close to midnight because that is not remotely possible, John. <laughs> so disregard that. So that's why d5 is possible here. And I probably confused a lot of you by saying there was a tactic possible after that. I can take, but I don't think it's anything earth-shattering in the short term. So maybe d5 is worth playing. And yeah, I probably would have taken. Queen takes. The engine's still very enthusiastic about white's position, probably because of black's lack of development. But maybe, based on how the game went, this would have been a better course of action. Or again, this knight c8 move. But black's, black's really hurting in the development department. They need to catch up in development. So black played knight c4, and that move did just seem shaky to me. Again, because the knight's undefended. And as we know from chess fundamentals 1, I almost said 101, but chess fundamentals 1, that video series that a lot of you have watched, you can find it on my channel, uh, undefended pieces are absolute magnets for tactics. So that's why I was already scanning moves like queen d3, queen d5, trying to figure out some permutation where I can punish black for that move. Is there one? I don't think so. I wasn't seeing anything amazing here. I played queen d5. I still do like that move. The engine's calling for this, queen e2, because if knight takes b2, there's queen b5 check. Nice fork right here. Again, I was trying to keep the queen aimed at that pawn, so I like queen d5 for that purpose. That hit the knight. Now, taking on b2 would be interesting. I calculated this line queen takes b7 hitting the knight but then rook b8 might actually be okay let's say check here queen d7 if there's a swap black's not doing all that bad but i probably would have thought a little bit and i might have found the move that the engine is is liking here queen b3 retreating and attacking the knight and taking away both of its flight squares here still looks mildly murky to me after queen b6 oh but then this is the stuff the engine comes up with. Bishop c1. Setting up for the next game, as Ben Feingold would say, but with decisive attack, uh, decisive effect when it comes to that knight. <laughs> that is a trap knight there. Okay, I don't know that I would have found that two-move sequence, but it would have been interesting had black taken on b2. Instead, black played g6, and, th and this is a tough spot. I know I was saying black should avoid um, or maybe think twice about playing a counterattacking move like that, but black is in a tough spot here. So it's an understandable move. 
trying to get rid of one of the attackers on d6. Yeah, and I just decided to take. Black took f5, and I took back. And I was liking this. I'm up a pawn. Now d5 happened. Yeah, and the next couple moves may be debatable. I decided to keep the queens on board. I wasn't sure necessarily how big my advantage would be here. I looked at something like this, knight c3 attacking the pawn, maybe this, or even rook e8 check. Didn't seem all that great to me, because with the queens off the board, black's uh, slight lag in development isn't going to matter as much. You can see I'm barely even better here. Black's pawns in the center are kind of nice. So it felt like keeping the queens on was best, so I did that. And now queen e7, and I think if black were to castle queenside on the next move, this could have been pretty interesting. So just looking at the engine eval here, it says king f1's a bit better than king d1. Maybe that's a nod to the fact that my king is just going to be safer over on the king side. I don't know. Because, yeah, king d1, there is this big threat, but had black castle the queen side, you can see uh, I'm still up a pawn. The evaluation is reading a little under plus one, so it's still a fight. There's still a lot to play for, everything to play for, even, even with an IM like me handling the white pieces. Uh, anything can happen here. I was thinking about playing the move knight c3, but interesting, yeah, c4, queen b5, queen f6. Okay, this is a total engine line, but this is still murky. Despite black's king being kind of cut off here, I can't easily land a check. And hey, my king is creating issues for me. It's preventing my rooks from coordinating. So yeah, I think if I were considering things I could improve on in this game, I don't know that I should have done this. And I maybe should just trade queens here. Maybe I'm being a little overambitious. And I could still bail out here with queen e3. This kind of reminds me of one of the Magnus Nepo games. I think it was game eight when Magnus was on the white side of Nepo's Petrov. And Nepo played that very risky uh, h5 paired with king f8 operation and you know went on to lose. So I was taking a few liberties with my king here. But yeah, at this point, black played c4 attacking the queen, and I think queen c3 is just big-time trouble because, again, I don't see how black comes out of this unscathed because now the rook's under attack, and rook e1 is on deck. It's a double attack. Queen, e, queen f6 trying to solve both problems. I mentioned could be met by this, or rook f1, rook e1 first even, but this looks pretty straightforward, just skewer. So trouble for my opponent. Yeah, I think d4 is relatively best. Hoping I play this, and then they can go rook d8. That totally turns the tables, but I would take on c4, which prevents black from castling, and rook e1 is still a massive threat. But at least here, black does prevent this. Maybe they can scrape something together, but not looking good down two pawns and an open king. So I think it's safe to say c4 was the decisive mistake. Castling, black's still very much in the game. But um, yeah, nice little move right here. Hit the undefended piece. Black played bishop g7, which didn't do much. Just took, and the game was over in a matter of moves. Good reminder for myself right here. I almost, I was within, uh, you know, milliseconds of releasing my queen on h8. But I know you guys would be yelling at me in the comments, so I had to find queen c7 checkmate. <laughs> all right, so I hope that was useful. I, I like this game from an instructional standpoint because I see this line all the time. Uh, drop a comment if you've seen this line, if you have experience in this as well. I think we'll see a lot of comments saying people have encountered this before. And know that that C5 move, you should be focusing on these. You can often play these plans where you, you look to castle queenside, you know? Even if white plays knight f3, let's say. Even if you don't throw that bishop check in. Let's just say you decide to develop in some manner like this. I think this is a totally legit plan as well. Just get lined up, attack that pawn. Black can have trouble here. Say knight e8, maybe you get e5, or again, this knight d5 outpost. Don't forget about that. You can try to remove a defender of d6 at some stage. It's nice if you try to use these squares. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. Happy New Year once again. Thanks to my opponent, Carlos. Hope you find this useful. Hope you found this useful, I should say. And um, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye. Take care.